Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 1999 American science fiction horror film called Deep Blue Sea. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. Our story begins with two couples having fun on a sailing boat when they feel a bump against the boat. The couples get such a shock and they fall into the water. As they scramble to get back on the boat, a large mako shark prepares to attack. When it's only several meters away, it suddenly stops. The shark is speared by a man named Carter who is on an approaching speedboat. Now, we see a helicopter landing on top of a building in a city, and Dr. Susan gets out. She has a meeting with her primary investor called Franklin, who is not happy about the bad news report of one of the facility's sharks escaping. She assures him and his boss that her team is developing a new drug that will reverse the effects of a dementia, which will increase the share price of their stocks. She asks for 48 hours to prove the value of her work. Later, we see Susan flying a small float plane with Franklin as her passenger. They approach, then land at the facility, which was a submarine refueling station during World War II. Now, Carter is watching as their boat captain is maneuvering a tiger shark in a net into a pool. The shark has a license plate stuck in its mouth. As Susan and Franklin arrive, Franklin meets with Jan, a marine biologist. Franklin sees Carter swimming in one of the pools, and the tiger shark is following him. So Franklin calls out to warn him. As the shark is about to attack, Carter pushes it aside, then grabs the dorsal fin and rides the shark whilst removing the license plate. Jan introduces Carter to Franklin, who is very impressed by Carter's handling of the shark. Jan shows Franklin the pool where the test sharks are kept. We see a woman named Brenda who is in the control tower warning the captain of the water taxi that a big storm is brewing not too far away. A large group of workers are boarding the water taxi to go back to the mainland for the weekend. Jan points to Dr. Jim Whitlock, who is the chief scientist. Now, Carter is loading some tranquilizer darts when a man named Tom asks Carter about the shark that escaped. Carter thinks Tom left the pool gate open, but Tom denies it. Jan and Franklin descend in the elevator to the living quarters, laboratories, and engineering below the surface. Now, Franklin is making small talk with Carter. Franklin knows that Carter spent two years in the military prison for smuggling. Carter tells him he's just here to do his job without making trouble. In the kitchen, we see a man called Preacher removing cakes from the oven. His pet parrot is shouting at him. Inside the test shark's pool, Tom releases the tiger shark, while Carter watches through the protective underwater mesh. In just moments, they rip it apart ferociously. Later, Brenda is in the tower calling Susan to the surface level for a situation that they have. When Susan walks out, everything is quiet, but then two flares fly up, and the lights come on with everyone yelling, Happy Birthday! Preacher talks to Franklin about an avalanche he and some others were caught in. Jan and Jim are telling Franklin how sharks never seem to deteriorate as they get older. Jan tells him that they have increased the size of the test shark's brains by five times so they can harvest more protein to use for their experiments on human brain tissue. Now, Carter is telling Susan that the sharks are evolving too quickly and are now attacking anything that they can. Susan makes some threatening remarks to Carter, so he walks away. We see Tom preparing for the storm as Carter gets into the water. The others enter the laboratory to watch Carter's progress in the underwater tunnel. Suddenly, two test sharks attack the tunnel mesh near Carter, but when he points the spear gun at them, they back off immediately. The group watching the cameras can't believe that the sharks recognize the spear gun. As they watch, the cameras are going offline. The sharks are knocking out the cameras. They call Carter, but he's not responding. We see one of the sharks attacking his air tank, but he's not wearing it. It was a trick so he could shoot the shark with the tranquilizer. He brings the stunned shark back into the wet lab. As they watch the shark and Carter rise on the platform, Franklin can't believe the size of the shark. Jim positions a scanner over the shark's head to monitor the vital signs. Susan climbs down onto the platform and attaches an apparatus on the shark's head. She then inserts a long needle into the shark's brain to extract the protein that they need. Once they have the protein, they introduce it to some brain culture from an Alzheimer's patient. As they watch the monitor, they wait for a reaction. In six and a half seconds, the brain tissue becomes activated and the test is a complete success. Jim walks away and lights up a cigarette. As he squats down near the shark, it comes to life and swings around, grabbing his arm and tearing it off. Carter manages to jump off the platform. Carter breaks a glass case to grab a shotgun, but before he can shoot the shark, Susan hits the emergency release and the platform and the shark descend into the water. In the tower, Brenda calls for an emergency medevac to take Jim to the mainland. As the storm intensifies, we see a helicopter on its way to pick up Jim. 
The helicopter lowers the cable and hook as they bring Jim out. Once he's hooked on, the helicopter starts to winch him up, but the winch starts to burn out and Jim is dropped into the shark pool, still attached by cable to the helicopter. Now, the cable goes tight as one of the sharks is dragging the helicopter behind it. The helicopter crashes into the tower exploding in a huge fireball. Everyone inside is thrown off their feet. Jan is thrown backwards into the tank, but Carter quickly pulls her out. On the surface, the large fuel tanks explode, causing more damage. As they try to contact Brenda, Franklin sees something through the glass in the shark pool. What they're seeing is a shark carrying Jim, and it throws him with the stretcher against the glass, which starts to crack before their eyes. They turn and run as the glass finally gives and starts flooding the room. They struggle to open the exit door and get it closed again. The group realizes the stairwell is now flooded and the elevator is shut down. The only way to get out is to go down to level 3, then take the small sub to the surface. As Preacher starts upstairs, a flood of water comes gushing down and he gets washed down the corridor. On the level below, we find the group rushing to get to the stairs leading down. As the water comes rushing at them, they just make it through the stairwell door. Outside on the surface, we see one of the sharks entering the facility. The group has reached level 3, but Franklin asks Carter if these sharks are strong enough and smart enough to break down a steel door to get to them. Carter thinks that's what they're doing. Susan tells Franklin that she and Jim illegally used gene therapy to increase the shark's brain size, which has made them so much smarter now. We see Preacher in the flooded corridor with one of the sharks coming towards him. He hurries through the kitchen doors and waits. Luckily, the sharks swim past the doors for now. Preacher holds his crucifix and prays. As the group enters the sub bay, they find the sub is badly damaged and useless. Back in the kitchen, Preacher finds a small axe, then climbs some shelves and the parrot flies off searching, then lands on a large pot. Just as Preacher is reaching for the parrot, the shark lunges up and eats the parrot. Preacher loses balance and falls into the water. With the shark close behind him, he just makes it into a large oven as a shark tries to bite him. As the shark keeps hitting the oven, it turns on the gas to the oven. Preacher uses the small axe to chop his way into the oven above. Before he gets through the doors, he lights his lighter and throws it at the shark, which bursts into flames. In the sub bay, Tom says he's not swimming to the surface because it's 230 feet to the top. As they're all beginning to argue about what to do, Franklin tells them the truth about the avalanche that he and four others survived. They had turned on each other and two were killed. But just as he tells them that they must work together, another shark comes out of the pool and drags Franklin back down with it. Now, the remaining four are in shock. Tom doesn't want to move. Carter has to talk some sense into him. If they stay there too long, the whole facility will sink to the ocean floor. When they open the door to the elevator well, the water starts rushing in from the pool. Carter and Tom barely manage to close the door. As they climb towards the surface, they see the burning elevator blocking the top. They have to get to level one to escape. Now, we see the large shark swimming up through the pool. Then he rams a locked door. Carter tells Tom he's going back down to level two to open the door and slow the water from rising. Meanwhile, the shark has broken through and is circling in the water below. After struggling with the door, Carter gets it open and just makes it to the ladder in time. As they're climbing upwards, the upper ladder supports give away, and part of the ladder falls backwards, dropping Jan into the water. Carter hangs down to help Jan, but she's pulled under the water. Suddenly, the shark rises out of the water holding Jan, but Carter can't pull her free, and she disappears with the shark. They lay on the fallen ladder, still stunned, then they hear a banging from the door above. Who should appear but Preacher, smiling down at them. He pulls him up to level one to safety. Carter and Tom work out that they might be able to pump out one stairwell. Tom and Carter leave to find the pump room while Susan and Preacher wait. Susan goes to her locker to collect the data disks with the test results. Carter leaves Tom in the corridor while he swims underwater to find the pump controls. We see the shark swimming through the corridors. Suddenly, Brenda's body floats in front of Carter and he swims up screaming from fright. Now, Tom appears next to him and they swim down to the controls to turn on the pump. Tom. No sooner switches the pump on when a shark attacks him. Carter swims away and is pushed by the water as he opens the door to a corridor. Preacher helps Carter back to level one, but he realizes Tom is gone. As Susan grabs her data disc, something nudges her from behind, but it's only the shark model, but then she sees the real shark approaching. She climbs up on a bench and pulls an electric cable out. 
When the shark lunges at her, she pushes the electric cable into its mouth and kills it, but also destroys her data disks. Carter and Preacher find Susan and they enter the airlock. Carter straps life vests to fire extinguishers to draw the last shark's attention away from them. Then he floods the chamber. As they swim to the surface, the shark grabs one of the extinguishers and they keep swimming. As they reach the surface, the shark grabs Preacher and swims away with him. Preacher holds his crucifix and stabs the shark in the eye and it releases him. Then Carter gets him out of the water. Susan treats Preacher's wounds and lets him rest. Carter then tells Susan the shark will try to break through the steel fencing to get out into the deep blue sea. Susan tells him they'll have to kill it. Carter prepares an explosive charge for the spear gun and tells Susan to use the boat battery to ignite the charge when he has speared the shark. The shark is too far away for Carter to spear it, but Susan has a plan to get the shark closer. Then she gets into the water to attract the shark. As the shark senses her blood, it turns and swims after Susan. When she tries to get out, she falls back in and Carter dives in to help her, but it's too late. The shark takes Susan, then comes for Carter. He avoids the bite and grabs hold of the dorsal fin, riding the shark. Now we see Preacher climbing up with the spear gun. Preacher fires and hits the dorsal fin, but also spears Carter's leg. Carter yells to Preacher to ignite the charge and blow up the shark. The shark makes a dash for the fence, but when it breaks through, Carter holds a fence and his leg comes free of the spear. Preacher finally touches the battery and the shark explodes into pieces, well beyond the fence. To Preacher's surprise, Carter reaches the surface still alive. He tells Carter to bring him some sushi. As they sit on the platform, finally able to rest, they hear the horn of the approaching water taxi bringing the next group of shift workers. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.